free body diagrams, part two of two. In our first video, we covered some details about drawing free body diagrams and talked about what they were. In this video, we're going to use those free body diagrams to help us apply Newton's second law to get an equation for each one of our pictures. So just some review of the first one. You draw a free body diagram to help you understand why something moves the way it does, or if it stays at rest, why it does so. And also, and this is the emphasis in this video, when we get to apply Newton's second law, we've got a picture to look at. So when we add up all the vectors and account for their directions, the picture shows us all those forces and which way they're going. Okay, so this was the example we looked at in box number, sorry, video number one. Uh, we got two boxes on top of each other, and we'll first consider the situation of you holding the bottom box and everything's at rest. Then we'll change things up and add an acceleration, but won't do that for a couple minutes. Okay, so we went over the free body diagram of box number one, accounting for all its interactions. It's interacting with the Earth, M1G, uh, is the force there, the gravitational force, and it's interacting with box two. We've got a normal force two on one. We have box two's free body diagram, and we were very careful to label the box one two interaction as a normal force applied down on box two by box number one, not M1G. Then we looked at the combined system free body diagram and said it's that and this, it combines into that. So just a normal force applied by U and the Earth interaction, M1 plus M2 times G. And we also saw how that came from adding together the individual box free body diagrams. Okay, so put those two things together and you get this. There's the normal force applied by U on 2, there's the combined uh, gravitational forces, and we didn't need to include the two normal forces because they are equal and opposite by Newton's third law. They're internal forces in the system. They cancel out. You only have to include forces external to the system when you draw your free body diagram. Okay, so that's where we were at the end of, bar of uh, video one. Okay, so now we'll go out ahead and we'll apply Newton's second law. So that means right out, some of all the forces acting on box one is M1 times box one's acceleration, A. But box one doesn't have any acceleration, so that'll help. We'll choose up to be positive. Okay, so here we go. Everything going up goes in with a positive sign. Everything going down goes in with a negative sign. So you get M1G directed down. It goes in as a minus sign. Solve for the normal force. We know the normal force applied by 2 on 1 is M1 times G. Great. So that's what Newton's second law allows us to solve for. What about box number 2? Similar thing. Some of all the force applied to box 2 is the mass of 2 times its acceleration. Again, we'll choose up to be positive. And again, the acceleration is 0. Anything going up is positive. We only have one positive force. The normal force applied by U on 2. The other normal force, Fn1 on 2, is down. It goes in the equation with a minus sign. M2G is down. It goes in with a minus sign. And then you can solve for Fn U on 2. Okay, so you rearrange Fn U on 2 as Fn1 on 2 plus M2G equals M1G plus M2G. How do we know that? Well, we're using what we learned from the previous screen in our free body diagram of box number one. We know the normal force applied by two on one is M1G, so then Fn1 on two is equal and opposite, so it must have a magnitude of M1G. Okay, so that all makes sense. Fn U on two is, you have to support the total weight of the system. Makes sense. Okay, what about if you tried to solve for that same normal force using this diagram, okay, so then we get the sum of the forces acting on the system is total system mass, M1 plus M2 times A. Note that if we change pictures, we change the mass. It's the mass of whatever object is in the picture. Again, up is positive. Again, A is zero. So here we've got plus Fn U12 minus M1 plus M2G is zero. Solve, and you get exactly the same thing we got in the previous screen. Just written differently, the previous screen had M1G plus M2G. Here we've got M1 plus M2 all multiplied by G. That's the same thing. Okay. So let's change things up. Now we'll give the system an upward acceleration. We could do this in a couple of different ways. You could just be lifting the boxes up off the floor and accelerating the up as you do so, or 
you could just step in an elevator and hit one of the up buttons and it would accelerate up for a second or two. Okay, so what's going to change? Well, that force is going to change. Uh, M1G can't change. We're stuck with the earth box interaction. It doesn't care that the system's accelerating, but the normal force would change. Okay, so we do. Some of all the forces acting on number one, box one is M1A. Again, up is positive. That's the direction of acceleration. So this time we get Fn211 minus M1G is M1A, and Fn211 is now M1G plus A. It's bigger than it was before. And note that when you put G in here, in your, if you're subbing in numbers, you put in positive 9.8 or positive 10, whatever you're using for G, not negative. We've already accounted for the direction of G when we set up the equation with our signs. Okay, so let's solve for the normal force applied by U on box number two. Again, the two normal forces would change size if, if there's an acceleration, but M2G would not. Okay, so all the forces acting on box two is M2 times A. This time, we'll stick with uh, positive up. This time, there is an acceleration. So we get the same equation on the left-hand side, but a different result on the right, not zero, but M2A. Okay, so for Fn U on two is Fn one on two plus M2G plus M2A. Well, from our previous result, we know Fn two on one is M1G plus A, so Fn one on two has the same magnitude, so we can write, replace that by M1G plus A. Okay, so Fn U on two is M1G plus A plus M2. G plus A. Again, if you put in G, put it in with a positive sign. Do we get the same thing if we use that free body diagram? Let's have a look. We should. Again, that force would be different than it was with no acceleration. Up is positive. Fn U on 2 positive. Minus M1G plus M2G is M1 plus M2A. Rearrange. You get exactly what we got on the previous screen, which we should. Okay, so there is an example of how these free body diagrams help us when it comes to applying Newton's second law. We get something to look at when we write down the equations. And that is it for this one.